Once, an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeezed through its... <laughs> The Fat Controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir. You are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the Fat Controller. But this time, it was good news. Oh, he said. How lovely. He returned to the dining room. Well, what do you know, my dear? Mr. Bahrain has invited us on a special tea train up Kuldy Fell. The thin and small controllers are also coming. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Kirk Matchin, the little purple engines were all observing a very fancy coach. This is the coach for the tea train, said Mr. Brain. First class style, all the way up Kuldy Fell. The engines were impressed. Who will be taking the first run? asked Wilfred. I rolled two dice this morning, and it landed on six and two, which makes eight. Therefore, Eric, our number eight, will operate the first run. Eric was very pleased. Why, thank you, sir. That night, he couldn't stop talking about it, much to the annoyance of the other engines. Ah, the first engine to take the tea train with the four big railway controllers. I don't believe it. I haven't felt this excited in my whole life. Yes, good for you, scoffed Patrick. Eric's never talked this much, whispered Coldy to Ernest. Oh, he's just excited, replied Ernest, and I would be too. The next day, Eric finished his work and got the train all ready. He was extra careful with the coach as he came into the platform. The thin and small controllers were already there. They waited for the fat controller and Lady Hat to show up. The time ticked on. Eric was impatient. Come on, he grumbled. We should have left by now. I hope something didn't hold them up, said the driver. Just then, the fat controller's car rolled in. He stepped out, holding a takeout bag. Sorry we're late. Had a few things to sort out, he said. Soon, they were all aboard, and Eric set off. Mr. Burain set up the kettle while the fat controller munched on his burger. Gently, Eric. We're in no hurry, said Eric's driver. Don't worry. Everything is under control, said Eric. Meanwhile, the controllers were all having a conversation about their railways. Your railway's mainly for passengers, said the thin controller to Mr. Burain. A tourist railway, more like. My railway's an actual functioning railway, and so is the small railway. What do you mean by functioning railway? replied Mr. Brain. If you haven't noticed, we are on a running train right now. I meant functioning as in supplying goods rather than just passengers, you know, like ballast or wool. Oh yeah, true. I mean, we do have trucks and all that, but they're mainly for just railway maintenance. Of course, there are no quarries or coal mines at the summit of the highest mountain on Sodor. Soon, Eric was making his way up the final descent. The controllers were all sipping their tea, enjoying the view. Good lord, said the small controller in awe. Never get this on your railway, eh, Topham? The fat controller chuckled and was making his way back to the seat with the tea kettle when it happened. A sheep strayed onto the line. Stop! yelled Eric. The driver slammed on the brakes, and the fat controller lurched backwards. The tea kettle flew out of his hands, right through the coach, out the back window, and smashed on poor Eric's face. Ouch! shrieked Eric. The passengers all stepped out to see what had happened. The fat controller laughed. Oh, how lovely. I see you've joined the tea party, he chuckled. Eric snorted. He didn't think it was funny at all. His boiler was so hot that the tea solidified and cracked. Mr. Burain picked up the shards of the teapot, and they continued on to the summit. Whilst the controllers were all in the cafe, workmen tried very hard to scrub off the tea, but it was difficult because the boiler was very hot. That a clumsy buffoon, Eric retorted, holding us up to get a hamburger and then a throwing things out the window. Despicable! I'm sure it was an accident, said his driver. He laughed at it. He took no responsibility for his actions, grunted Eric. 
on the way down, things went more smoothly. Well, mostly. Everyone was eating a chocolate cake, but they had to act fast or the Fat Controller would gobble it up. Chop him! You'll make yourself sick! said Lady Hat. And us too, laughed the Small Controller. Nonsense, dear, chuckled the Fat Controller. This is Mr. Burain's special treat. He walked over to the cake to get another slice when the train approached a crossing. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a lorry darted over the crossing and Eric slammed on the brakes. There was a squelching noise inside and a very loud bother from the Fat Controller. Back at Kirk Matchin, everyone cackled when the Fat Controller emerged. He was covered in thick, gooey chocolate cake. I could be wrong, snickered Eric. But I think you're supposed to eat the cake, not to wear it. The Fat Controller laughed. Yes, indeed. I'm sorry I spilt tea on you. I was being careless. That's all right, sir, said Eric. We all have accidents. We just need to learn from them. Right you are, replied the Fat Controller, licking his fingers. Well, I could say the first tea train was sort of a success, said Mr. Brain. Yes, indeed, said the Fat Controller. Thank you for inviting us. Now, if you excuse me, I better go find a bath.